Hello Power People and thank you for joining me Joe Unwin also known as Flojo on another Power Automate video. Today we're going to be looking at date differences and how we get two dates and find the differences between them the date and the time. Now there are two very different ways of doing this. There is a newer way and an older way. The older way is called TIX. It's much more complicated to understand but it provides a more simpler result. So it really depends on what you're trying to achieve with the date differences to which one you'll use. But I'm gonna actually show you both of them and you can then decide which one you want to use because sometimes you want to know the time and sometimes you don't. So let's actually get started then. What I've got is I've got a manual trigger flow and I've just got a compose with a start date and time. The date is in the uh, 2023 to dash 12 dash 01 and then the time is all zeros format now obviously this is the 1st of December 2023 at midnight then the end date I've got 2023 dash 12 dash 08 so I'm seven days forward but I'm also doing it at 10 a.m. so the date difference is seven hour uh, seven days and ten hours so we know this just by looking at it, right? But we need Power Automate to calculate this because we may have loads of dates coming from Dataverse, from Excel, from wherever, and we need to automatically calculate this. So how do we do it? Well, the first way I'm going to show you is called the ticks method. Now, a tick is a 100 nanosecond tick. It's basically 100 nanoseconds each time that we can uh, calculate to be a total number of nanoseconds in a day now if I've already lost you um, don't worry I'm going to go through it further but it's quite complicated because what we need to do and I'll highlight this on here um, it's quite small I'll put all of this in the description so you can uh, actually read it further but essentially we need to divide the um, ticks between each one which we subtract by a day sounds really complicated so let's go into the first function what we're doing is we're doing subtraction and we're doing ticks so what we're doing is we're doing a tick of the date and time and then we're doing another tick of the date and time and then we're subtracting both of them but we're starting at the end date and then we are passing in the start date. So what we do is we subtract the end date from the start date in tick format. So we convert them to a tick. So 100 nanoseconds per, uh, per one calculates all the way up. Um, and each of them, then we subtract both of them. So we've got these two large numbers that we're subtracting. And then what we do is we divide that very large number by this massive 8640000000 uh, number. Now that 864 number is actually a day. That is a day in nanoseconds. So what we do is we calculate the ticks of each of the dates, we subtract them, we have a massive number, then we divide it by the tick total of a day. So we're simply dividing the differences by a day and then we end up with the a total days left between them very complicated but this is very good way of actually calculating days between dates because it does it simple you don't need to do anything to it but you don't have the time difference so let's just run a test and actually see the difference then a few moments later and let's see what we actually get back Okay, so we have our start date and time. We have our end date and time. We know it's seven days and 10 hours. So what do we get back with the tick method? We get seven. So we know there are seven days between them. But what if we wanted to also know the hours between them as well? So we want the days, the hours, the minutes, the seconds, any time that we want we don't want to use the tick method. We want to use a different method, which is a newer method. 
So bear in mind that this returns a nice seven, a nice easy number. You can then just use this output and calculate, yep, yeah, it's seven days later or seven days earlier, whichever way you're trying to work it out, you can then um, go and continue with your flow. Very easy, nice, you just get a single digit number and you can continue. But if you use the newer method, you get the time as well, but you need to do some additional stuff to it to actually make sense of the data returned. So let's go back into this. So obviously we've got our st start uh, date and end time. We're, we're using exactly the same things, um, uh, but this time we're going into the date difference function. So what is the difference here then? Well, the date difference is a function that you need to pass the date and time. So you need to use the pass date time function you need to pass in the date and time if it's not in a standard format. So you would use pass date time. You would pass in the start time, for example. Then you would do comma, and then you need to do the location. So in this instance, I'm doing pass as start date, and then I'm doing comma. Then I'm doing en-ca because I'm in English Canada. And you would do the same for the end date. You would then do pass date time, the output of end date, and then comma en-ca. And don't forget the single quotation marks around those. Now, this looks very much more simpler, right? Like you haven't got all these ticks things you've got to remember. You haven't got this big, huge 864 number that you have to like calculate for the days that you're doing division and subtraction and all that. But as you'll see, there are negatives to the way of doing this. Um, and I'll show you that momentarily. But simply put, all you do is date difference, you do your pass date, you do the start date first this time, comma, the location, and then do another comma um, after you've closed the parentheses and do pass date time again, uh, end date and uh, the location. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually run this and see what we get back and then I'll show you how we can manipulate that data and handle it. So I'm just going to run this test again, uh, run the flow. And now what we've got back is we've got the start date and end date again. Remember we got seven back initially for the tick version, but now on the date difference, what do we get back? We get 7.10 and then colon zero, zero, colon zero, zero. So what this is actually providing us is it's seven days, 10 hours, zero minutes, zero seconds. So we get all of that information back, but you can't just go and use this because it doesn't make sense to use this anywhere, right? You're not just, you've not got the date separate, you've not got the time separate, so you actually need to separate this. And what you can actually do is you can actually just use the split function. So if you do split, I will just highlight over that so you can see it on the screen, then I'll go through it. You can just pass the output of the compose action, the date difference function, and then do comma, single quotation marks, and then the full stop, because if you remember, it was 7.10. So if we split it at that point, that full stop, we end up with seven for the days, and then the time underneath it. So if we run this, um, actually, what, what I'll do is I'll just show you on the expression box here, just so you can see more clearer. You just have outputs, and then you have the comma, and then the single quotation marks and the full stop, right? So then it's just splitting at that particular full stop. And what it does is it removes the full stop as well, so you just have your seven and then your time. So let's just run this again and actually see it. So again, previously the ticks was seven, nice and easy to use. The date difference function was 7.10, uh, etc. And now we're using the split, we now have that into a seven, and then we have the time in a different uh, section. So we've now created an array, we've got seven for the days, and then the actual time underneath it. So now we have 
an easy way to break down that information. We have how many days and then how much time. So this is another way you can do it. So if you're, um, if, if the information about the time is key, obviously use date difference. It will provide you with the information that you're required because you're going to need the hours, the minutes, the seconds difference as well. But my recommendation is if you're just looking at using the days, then I would use the tick method. But if you're looking for days and time, then I would use the date difference method. Obviously then you can then pull this information out using um, first to just get the, um, uh, the, the days, or you can just use the square brackets um, and just do one because this is a base of zero to get the uh, time. Uh, now that's obviously JSON and uh, if you want to find out any more information about that and how you retrieve that, obviously just uh, Google it or watch one of my other videos um, that I've done previously. I've done a video on how you can uh, avoid using um, apply to each that goes through how you can use the square brackets to retrieve information from um, arrays without having an apply to each for you. So if you're looking at doing that, then definitely check out that video. But that is how you can tell the difference between two dates for both the days and the times on Power Automate. Now we're trying to get to 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and that like button to help out the channel and the video. Really appreciate you watching and see you next time.